there are opportunities for this to be a good movie. Yeah. Spin Me Round, which is a whole lot of different kinds of movie at once with a giant cast. Mm. Alonzo, tell us about it. Yes, a giant cast of people who wanted to go to Italy and who can blame them. Welcome, everyone. I would like to introduce our CEO, Nick Martucci. Ciao, amici. This is a film from Jeff Baina, who is uh, married to Aubrey Plaza, I believe, and has yeah. directed her in several films, including The Little Hours and Life After Beth. Uh, this one is a comedy question mark sometimes uh yes at moments <laughs> allison brie plays the manager of a not olive garden i believe it's what tuscan grove is what they uh -huh. call it Very uh nice. in bakersfield california she wins an opportunity to travel to italy with other uh, location managers of this very popular chain restaurant to learn more about Italian cooking and uh, the heart of the company. Um, along for the ride are uh, Debbie Ryan and uh, Molly Shannon and Zach Woods and Tim Heidecker and uh, Aiden Mayeri, who I know from, uh, I love that for you. And of course, nothing is as promised. They're, they're told it's going to be a beautiful villa outside of Florence, but they're actually stuck in this cruddy hotel where the doors don't lock. Aubrey Plaza plays the assistant to the guy who runs the company, played by Alessandro Nivola. And it's pretty clear early on that something sketchy is up. And you'll probably figure out what it is, but the movie takes so long to get there, you'll begin to wonder if you were right when you figured out what it was but then no you figured out what it was there are opportunities for this to be a good movie yeah <laughs> <laughs> there are so many different kinds of movie going on because it's like it is this kind of sticky satire of soulless corporate greed and just like homogeneity i mean the whole opening sequence is about like the pasta being made and in like the, Alf the Alfredo <laughs> sauce being put into these lumpy plastic bags. You yeah. glorp onto the noodles and then throw it in the microwave. Glorp is a really good onomatopoeia for what <laughs> happens here. Um, and so you think it's going to be that it, along the lines of like office space or um, for the girls, right? Was it support the girls or for the girls? Support the girls. Support the girls, right? Where like they're making fun of, like how cheesy, the cheesy sameness of right. like strip Hooters. malls or whatever it is. Um, and it is that. And it's also kind of a under the Tuscan sun or eat, pray, love of this young woman who's never seen the world and goes to Italy and like discovers herself and has adventures. And and then there's a possibility of a flirtation or something more with both Alessandro Nivola and Aubrey Plaza. And like, that is maybe the most interesting movie of all. Like her scenes with Aubrey Plaza are sexy and tense and they get like the slightest tinge of weirdness to them that's really intriguing. And I kind of wanted that. I kind of wanted more of that movie, but then it also has to become some whole other thing. And then it's got like, as you say, the, the place that it goes to is not all that shocking. Yeah. <laughs> right. But like that's a, whole, that's a whole different kind of movie. And then sometimes it's almost a horror movie. I mean, I just, I don't know what the point is here. They yeah. never gel. <sighs> I, you know, they're clearly trying to put the Alison Brie character on this arc where she can sort of like become stronger. And 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 there's a there's a moment like in the last five or 10 minutes, they're playing around a lot with the idea of like these romance tropes that we have grown to think are charming are actually creepy. Mm -hmm. And that like when dudes make a big gesture and and movie heroines, you know, forgive them for it or are, are won over by that. It's more realistic if that were really happening to go ew no no i don't stop it you know mm -hmm. and that's a funny idea but it takes so long to get there and you have to go through all these other weird dead ends along the way everybody seems to be in a different movie mm -hmm. and kind of improving a lot of it as they go along molly shannon basically is bipolar for laughs i guess in this movie is that the what we're supposed to take know. away from that i don't know i don't know what it is i mean the whole running gag is that she, her luggage got lost yeah. says she has to go shopping and so in each new scene she's in some ridiculous ensemble that she yeah. went and bought and like that alone is supposed to be hilarious like putting molly shannon in these like sorbet colored monstrosity outfits yeah like that's supposed to be funny in and of itself but then like who is she like 
each person is one or two traits and then eventually the movie wants you to care about them as more substantial human beings and the groundwork has just not been laid for yeah. that at all. The stuff with Alessandro Novola, again, is potentially intriguing. I always like him. Yeah. He's really handsome, but he's got that like untrustworthy thing going, <laughs> right? Like there's yes. something, there's always something a little sketchy, whether it's in Many Saints of Newark, like what, whatever it is, a big or small. The he thing that makes him not a traditional leading man is what makes him an interesting, like, potential antagonist yes completely but he has like the the looks and the charisma of a traditional leading man but he used it to go to weird dark places and i like that about his choices that nugget of a movie is interesting and then the aubrey plaza part of that is kind of interesting and then they just don't know what to do with her i mean i realize like it's her husband who made this movie and so she wants to be in it, but I wish that he knew what to do with her better here. There's a really great Aubrey Plaza movie out right now called Emily the Criminal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's the one you should, if you're, if you're only going to see one, that's the one to go to. Yeah, this this movie just, it has that feeling of like, like a bad Judd Apatow of like, we're just, mm. we look at all these amazing people we cast. Surely they'll come up with something funny in the moment and then they don't. And so it, it, it just, a lot of it feels like it's it's kind of, flailing around unfortunately and and i couldn't escape the idea of like these people are all enjoying a really lovely vacation to italy it was like watching couples retreat which was a terrible movie oh, but it's like yes. oh well y'all got to go to the south pacific how nice for you and i like allison brie but she sure. has to navigate so many awkward tonal shifts that even somebody as capable as her cannot do that there is a weirdly classist tinge to this movie in that like it's so above Olive Garden and so too cool for Olive Garden and knows that Olive Garden is shit. And yes, a case could be made, mm -hmm. but it it smacks of like, oh, you stupid flyover fucks. You don't know about real food and we're here to mock you. I don't know. I, I think a better movie, they could have done all those things and not make me think about that. But I kept thinking about that. He has a line, Alessandro Nivola's character, whose name is Nick, has a line about how, like, this was supposed to be my Spago. Right. Right? <laughs> so maybe, like, there's a nugget of an idea in there. Yes. Like, how do you sell yourself out and you no longer pursue that dream of, like, purity and you go for the cheap, easy cash? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, so I'm saying 3.6. I... I, I... <sighs> I think I was too generous. I'm gonna. I'll. I'll, I'll say uh, five point two, just because I did laugh occasionally, mm -hmm. uh, but most of the most part, I kept seeing the shape of a movie that it never becomes, and the one it is isn't anything.